Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's what the scripture declares is how a person comes to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible puts the emphasis upon believing the Lord Jesus Christ, and the reformers put three elements into true saving faith. They looked at knowledge, assent, and heart trust. So knowledge, I believe it was Luther that had those originally, and he used the Latin term notitia, meaning that to believe the gospel you had to know certain theological and biblical truths. And I believe that's true. So in an essence, there is no such thing as empty belief because true belief is based upon the knowledge which the Scripture gives to us concerning the person of Christ, the work of Christ, and the word of Christ. So when I say I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I mean that I believe in his person, that he was God. I believe in his work, that he did his redemptive work, which is still going on now in heaven at God's right hand. And also we believe in the word of God that reveals all these things. And so and we believe in his person, his work, and his word, because many people today, we live in a day when people, for instance, many evangelical preachers and people who are classed as godly men say they no longer believe in hell. Well, that's part of the word of God and part of the words of Christ. In fact, Shed sh said that Christ is the main revelator of everlasting punishment. So if I say, well, I believe in Jesus, but I don't believe in hell, then I do not believe in Jesus' word. So I deny his word while claiming to believe in him. But you cannot do that because belief is based upon knowledge. So I have to stay with the knowledge which the scriptures reveal about Christ, that he is the Son of God, that he was born of the Virgin Mary, and that's a Roman Catholic term, I realize, because we Protestants believe that Mary was not always a virgin, that she gave birth to other children. But Christ was born of the Virgin Mary, a miraculous supernatural birth that brought the incarnate Son of God into being. And he was from all eternity past, but he came there and took upon himself flesh and blood. So I have to look, I have to know something about the person of Christ. He's not just another man. He's not just a great teacher. He's not just some uh, martyr hanging on a cross. No, he's the Son of God, the everlasting God from eternity to eternity. But then I have to believe also in his work. So Christ came to die. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? So I look at that. Christ came, and he had one mission, and that was to die. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And I have to see in the death of Christ... I have to see the payment for my sins. So people say, you know, I don't believe in homosexuality. I don't promote abortion and I'm not a murderer. And so they say all these little things uh, and to try to make themselves out not to be much of a sinner. But old Bishop J.C. Ryle said, you know, if you want to see sin, you don't go to the gambling dens. You don't go to the vice dens. He said, you go to the cross. That's where you see the full depravity and wickedness of man's sin. Because no matter how righteous or self-righteous a man may try to be, if he's ever going to be saved, he has to believe that Christ died for his sins. And in believing that, he recognizes the enormity 
of his sins because it took the death of the God-man to atone for them. The death of the God-man to atone for, you may think my sin's not much, I've just cheated here or lied there and I've never killed anybody. No, you're a sinner. You're a sinner by nature and it took the death of the second person of the Trinity to atone for your sins. That's the enormity of personal and human depravity. And then I have to believe, of course, that in the word of Christ, not just in his person and not just in his work, and I should mention there his glorious resurrection as part of his work, being resurrected from the dead, that we might have his personal righteousness put to us when we are justified by faith. So we come there to believe in the cross work of Christ, his glorious resurrection, and in his ascension to God's right hand, where he ever lives as the only mediator between God and man, the only person that can bring a sinner to God is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I have to believe in his word also. That is what he taught. So I cannot quibble over the words of Scripture if I'm truly to believe on Jesus. I have to believe that he was the way, the truth, and the life. So he is absolute truth. And so I'm never going to quibble. I can't answer all the deep, dark uh, doctrines of predestination, heaven and hell, and many things about those things that I cannot maybe fully comprehend. But I believe what Jesus said was true. And that's enough for me. My knowledge of that life is small, Baxter said, and the eye of faith is dim. But tis enough that Christ knows all, and I shall be with him. So you look to the Savior. But you know, you can have that knowledge. And many people will go to church on Easter or Christmas. Uh, my wife there had a uh, close friend, and uh, she, uh, she, would always, she never went to church, but she would always go to church on Christmas and always go to church on Easter. So they know about Christ. They know that he's the Son of God. They know that he was crucified. They know that the Bible teaches he was resurrected and sent to God's right hand. And they know these truths about heaven and hell, but they don't necessarily agree that they're true. So I not only have to have the knowledge of the truth, but I must agree with what is revealed that this is the truth, and it is the truth to me. I have to come to agree with the great statements of the word of God. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So that takes out a lot of people, and that uh, destroys the term easy believism, so while they may believe some uh, of the things about the knowledge of Christ that are set forth in the Scripture, they do not agree necessarily that these things are important for eternal salvation or important to them personally. But I believe, in other words, and as the Reformers taught, that is part of true belief, is to agree with the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, I don't see how a person can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, if they don't agree with what he said. So in other words, if you tell me a story and, and you expect me to believe it, but I say, I don't agree with that, well, then I'm not believing you. I'm not believing you at all. <laughs> I'm just refusing to believe what you tell me. So I have to agree with that. But even that is not quite enough. So there's many people that look at the Word of God and they say that, you know, I, I, I know that, I know that about Christ, I know that he died, I know that he rose again, I know that he's coming again, uh, but I, and I, I, um, I give some kind of a, an assent to those things and agree with them, but I've never come to put my personal faith in Christ. So Christianity is a personal, individual faith. The faith of my mother, and she was a godly woman, is not enough for me, and the faith of my father or my minister, or my friend. I have to come to understand, see what is revealed, agree with what is revealed, and then say, I'm going to put my faith 
in the work of Christ, in the person of Christ, in that which is revealed in his word. I'm going to believe that. And when you do that, you will be saved. That's what the Bible says. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. In other words, the Spirit of God then begins to work in your heart and when you acknowledge Christ as Savior and Lord and see what he has done on the cross and in his resurrection and session at God's right hand, then you are saved. That's the wonder of redemption. Today we live in a works religion atmosphere and sad to say it's all through what is called Bible believing Christianity. But I have to come to look at the great evangelical words of scripture. Rest, faith, belief, grace, gift, promise. These are the words of scripture. And the word gift is the all comprehensive term because the scripture says thereby grace are you saved through faith that is through belief and that is not of yourselves not even your belief comes from you it comes from God the Holy Spirit it is the gift of God through Jesus Christ our Lord not of works lest any man should boast so it's all of grace and all of faith justification by faith alone in the finished work of Christ salvation by grace alone in the Bible alone through Christ alone those are the great doctrines of the Protestant Reformation and they're not just the doctrines of the Protestant Reformation they are the doctrines of historic biblical Christianity they are the doctrines of the word of God believe on him and I have a gift given to me. It's the gift of salvation. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord.